It's that time, 9 o'clock Pacific time, midnight Eastern time, Friday night. It's the Justin McDonald Show podcast. It's a little fun we like to have. We'll blow off a little steam for the end of the week. Hey, we're going to have a great uh, program tonight. We're going to have my favorite memes. Yes, stuff that makes us laugh. This is the No Politics Zone, by the way. Also, we're going to talk to my good friend Trey Gallion. Uh, he's a comedian. He's been out on the road. He's got many other projects happening. We'll see what's up with him during this COVID-19 time. I'm going to ask him how he copes with that, of course. And then also we'll do What's in the Bowl, and that's our little serial review segment, and we look forward to doing that as well. And I appreciate you. Make sure you always go to TalkCast PDX and check out our great programming. We might even uh, chat with Citizen Smith tonight real quick if we can get him on the Zoom call. We'll, we'll see what we can do, all right? So let's get ready now for My Favorite Memes. All right, here we go with meme number one. I love this one because I'm a Star Wars fan. I love uh, The Mandalorian. I, I can't get enough of it. I, just, I can't get enough of it. I was talking with Clyde Lewis the other day from Ground Zero, the radio show, and then, of course, Channel Zero that he does here on TalkCast PDX. And we just we were, were so enamored with The Mandalorian, how well-written it is, how well-directed it is. I just can't get enough. I love Star Wars. I'm a nerd. I don't care. I love it so. But this is one of my favorite memes uh, right now. It's Yoda on his deathbed. It says, now that I have children, I really understand the scene in Return of the Jedi where Yoda is so tired of answering Luke's question as he just up and dies. <laughs> it's kind of true. It's like, enough already. And then just fade off into the Jedi glory. Oh, my goodness. But that's one of my favorite memes this week. Now let's go on to meme number two because we don't have a lot of time and we're not going to waste it. All right, meme number two. Here we go. Uh, this is a great one. I can actually really relate to this one right now because, you know, starting a new show and so on and so forth. It's got Snoop Dogg on the front with his glasses on and hair kind of frizzy. And it says, when you wake up to zero notifications, realizing you mean nothing to anyone. It can be humbling when you put out your podcast and it goes out there and you get one listen or maybe two listens. You reach a bunch of people, but it doesn't seem like anybody's watching or listening. It can be a little demoralizing. It can kind of hurt a little bit. But guess what? It's a marathon, not a sprint, okay? So just remember that, people. All right, shake it off. Now we go on to meme number three, and this one speaks to me as well right now. Everybody can relate to this. We all want to get on a plane and go somewhere. But it shows a long picture of a jetway, and it says, I'm ready to walk down the aisle. Oh, yeah, baby. Yes, I'm ready for that. That's the kind of commitment I need right there. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, my goodness. I, I can't wait. And just uh, on a little side note, I have a trip to Hawaii planned here pretty quick. Got to get that COVID test three days before you leave, so on and so forth. I'm hoping that all goes as planned. And uh, I'll be sitting on the beach drinking some Mai Tais and enjoying myself with my toes in the, in the sand. How's that sound? Oh, yeah. I just made everybody hate me. Oh. All right. That'll do it for my favorite memes uh, this time around. We'll take a break. We'll come back. We're going to talk with my good friend, comedian Trey Gallion, right here on the Justin McDonald Show podcast.
It's the Justin McDonald Show. Uh, you know, it's our first show. It's our inaugural show, if you will. And uh, joining me right now via Zoom, just like everybody does nowadays, you know, we're no worse than the major networks. We, we're just doing the same things that everybody else is doing during this COVID-19 pandem- pandemic. And Trey Gallon's a, a comedian, a friend. We've known each other uh, via social media for some time. Uh, we met each other when did we meet each other back at, at Oregon's finest a couple years ago, right? Yeah. Oregon's finest a couple years ago. I came in with Doug Benson and, uh, that's right. And we started chatting it up. We were all starstruck a little bit. Cause you guys were came in and we were like, Oh, we're going to hook these guys up. This is going to be great. And uh, I love going anywhere pot related with him, <laughs> you know, cause yeah, you get the VIP treatment, of course, you know, well, this is Portland, uh, you know, otherwise known as Potlandia, and there is a fair amount of cannabis use that goes on in this city, uh, not to mention beer drinking, and uh, boy, people are making their own craft, uh, <laughs> their own craft uh, whiskeys and hard liquors and spirits, and I think it's just great. I live out in wine country, so we really have covered all the, the, the substances here, um, and now everybody, of course, is talking about how we decriminalized small amounts of hard drugs and uh, requiring treatment programs. And then of course the psilocybin treatment uh, that has been passed, you know, where you can help treat mental illness with mushrooms. Whoever, who would have thought of that? It always made me mental, not help me mentally. I was freaked me out a little well, bit. When I, was younger. I love all these little qualifiers, you know, that they're putting on it and you know how they're wording it differently in different States. Like I think Colorado was just like, no, yeah, man. Hey, it, we're recreational use, whatever, you know, right. uh, but they did the same thing with weed. You know, it's like where these states will be like, well, we're just going to do Marinol pills at first, you know, for medical. <laughs> and then it's just like, OK, some plants, but only for people that are really, really dying, you know, and then open it up for, you know, so it's funny just to see how different states handle it. You had to be knocking on death's door to get a toke off a joint um, to soothe your pain. But dude, that's how it was here in New York for a long time. Yeah. Like, and it's still pretty, it's still very, very restricted. Like they don't have medical dispensaries even, you know, on the street, you don't pass those. I was always a proponent for the medical side of things. And then I always, for me, the recre- recreational side of things, I'm having trouble speaking today. Um, I always thought it was just a matter of, convenience for most people you know a lot a lot of people use cannabis and to me it was always just a convenience issue because people would have to get off work and then go wait for their guy somewhere (laughs) i mean any 20 anybody who was a 20 something in the 90s will tell you it was you know just about everybody i know indulged in cannabis at some time or another now i'm a little older you know of course things are different uh we have different career paths different things we do we can't you know fly our freak flag, if you will, um, like we used to when we were younger. Um, but I always just thought it was a matter of convenience. You know, now, now somebody can just get off the store and just, I mean, get off work and just go to the store. No problem. Yeah. But it's amazing how, uh, like California, going to dispensaries there for the most part has not been a pleasant experience for me, just in one way or another, customer service wise or the way it's set up. Because especially when you go to like, go to a store like Oregon's finest or, you know, some of these places in Colorado, mm-hmm. you know, where they've been doing it long enough and they, they have a head for it and you really see how a dispensary could be run. And you're like, Oh yeah. You're like, man, these guys got it good here. Yeah, exactly. Wow. And uh, then we're still, you know, I'm still in the dark ages over here dealing in the, uh, where they call it the people's market. The black mar- <laughs> What's the current lingo now for the black market? The Whatever. Non-regulated what the non-regulated market. The yeah. non-regulated market is what they call it, I believe. There you go. The same thing with um, beer pubs and brew pubs, uh, places like that. I've been to several. I mean, I used to love uh, just blowing the froth off a few all the time. And I love craft beers. I love homemade beers. Um, I find that Oregon, I mean, when you were in Portland, did you find a good selection that did, did it even did you have a selection in like Philadelphia, let's say, that even compares to that selection that you could get in Portland? Oh, that's I mean when it comes well, to beer. You, I mean, beer kinda because you know, I lived in Austin for a long time. I was in Austin for 20 okay. years. A lot of brew. Uh, yes, yeah. And you know, like my college beer was China Bach before it was, you know, nation nationwide. You, you beat my college beer. 
my college beer was Oli Olympia beer. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, right. But it's always some regional thing, you know. Right, right, right. Yeah, beer. Yeah, there's so much beer in Portland. I go to the grocery store and I can't decide. It, there's just too much to choose from. It's like, I'm just gonna put my arm out there and, and, and feel for one, and whatever one I get, that's what I'm gonna have. No, where, yeah, you just start narrowing it down by qualifiers. It's like, okay, I know I like brown ales. Yeah. You know? So let me just find the brown ale section and I'll just pick one of those, <laughs> you know? Yeah, that's like going to the liquor store too. It's like, you know, what, what do you want? What do you want to choose? There's just too much. I feel like there's just too much to choose from. you are giving me too much anxiety over choosing something special. Um, yeah, that's the, yeah, liquor store is easy for me. I'm just like, give me that top bottle of Tito's right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's um, it. As far as this COVID-19 thing goes, it's it's tough on a comedian, I'm sure. What have you been doing uh, since, I mean, you can't go on the road necessarily. Have you been, have you tried that? Do you have to wear a mask? I got all kinds of questions for you when it yeah, comes man. to hitting the road. We're going to try it. Me and Jeff Tate are going to try to do a show in a couple of weeks in uh, Knoxville. because I'm going down there for Thanksgiving and he lives in Cincinnati. So that's an easy drive for him. So we have it scheduled right now. It's going to be on the 24th um at this little um outdoor spot where they have a bunch of food trucks and stuff Fun. but but they have a little canopy roof you know that they have set up because they do other things there like trivia nights and bands and stuff so we're gonna see how that works you know uh but yeah no besides that i've done a couple of zoom shows and then yeah just recorded <laughs> podcasts over zoom like this you know that's awesome. um there are outdoor shows here in New York, you know, and I've been to a few. I just haven't done any yet. And I mean, because it's all just a mixed bag. I mean, look, we <clears throat> if you've been doing comedy a long time, you've done outdoor shows before. Yeah. But it's never been your favorite show to do, you know. <laughs> so now that they're all outdoors, <laughs> it's, um, it's like, oh, geez. All right. Here we What's go, a, man. Just outdoor shows just don't feel the same as a dark, dingy club or. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's it. And it's all, you know, because a lot of comedy rooms are set up to intimate feeling mm. and all the laughs stay there because, you know, if they have a low ceiling and stuff like that. So, you know, the nice thing, the fun thing about park shows uh, is just the chaos that could ensue. That's half the reason <laughs> I go just just to watch them, you know, is because some, somebody's dog will run up and mess with the comic or, you know, I've seen one comic that hosts a show over here literally almost get into two fights because he just doesn't know. He's still too green to know how to handle situations properly and uh, said the wrong thing to this little kid that was wandering around the show. And uh, we could all see it coming. As soon as he said the thing to the kid, we are all like, oh, that kid's mom is about to tear this dude up. Sure enough, she came over, got in his face, you know. I mean, in Brooklyn, you can't be doing that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I've only been to New York a couple times, and um, I'd like to go again. But right now, they're telling everybody not to travel or do anything. I mean, Oregon just got another shutdown notice for a couple weeks. And we're feeling it here a little bit in Portland. A lot of restaurants, uh, you know, closing up shop. You know, you hear all about the riots and stuff here in Portland. It's it is it happens, but it's like in a one little area, sort of right in downtown. But it, it is all boarded up and stuff down there. It looks really weird. It looks like a, a third world country kind of when you come rolling into downtown. Um, but you know, Portland's such a beautiful city. It's got so many great areas. It's just sad that we're known for this rioting that's been going on. Um, you know, it's no, it really is. Kind of lame, and, you know? Yeah, it is. And people need to like the nice thing is, is my friends have been like, hey, now this is what I'm seeing on TV. What's really going on over there? Right. You know, at least they have sense enough to do that. And it's like, yeah. yeah, no, you're right. It's like, yeah, there are people that are out doing stuff. <laughs> But they're it's in specific parts of the city. Yeah, you're always gonna like, get a few troublemakers in there. Right. Right. But just in my neighborhood, nah, man, we're cool. <laughs> and I mean, I'm the minority in my neighborhood. And right. So, you know, and everything's fine. And that's the case in a lot of places. And I don't think some people realize that. But Portland is a great place. We got, you know, great food, great uh spirits, uh, great cannabis, great everything. Uh, and I think we got a pretty good mood here too, now that uh 
you know, this is the no politics zone, but that's kind of, that's why we do this is to kind of just forget about that politics stuff, you know, and just talk about all the good things, you know? Dude, it's a dope spot. It's, it's how Austin used to be before Austin got blowed out with yeah. better scenery, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, Austin's I, in the middle of Texas. At least you guys got the mountains and the beach. That's right. And I'm from Seattle originally, and I love the Pacific Northwest, and I always loved coming to Portland. That's why I moved here in 2015. I was like, man, you know, if I got to go somewhere, I was actually in Anchorage at the time up in Alaska, and I was like, I moved back to the Pacific Northwest, back home. Where do I want to live? And Portland yeah. just kept coming straight to the top. It was a it was a close one between Portland and Bend. All right, so I was going back and forth between Portland and Bend, Oregon. Which way do I want to go? Which way do I want to go? And it ended up being Portland, which is fine. I live out a little farther out in wine country, which is nice. But let me tell you, it was a it was a tough tough decision, uh, just because Oregon is great all the way around. I mean, yeah, man, Eugene, I was listening to Billy Wayne's podcast that grown local and season oh, yeah. one they did in Eugene with yeah. a bunch of the, the people in the industry there. And uh, it was really fun to listen to. And yeah, it seems like Eugene's a pretty, pretty cool spot. Yeah, Eugene's a nice place. I, I mean, everywhere I've gone in Oregon, I'm a coastal guy, too. I like the coast. So I go to like Cannon Beach and Seaside all the time. And drive down to Manzanita, you know, it's nice just to, it's so close to where we're at just to go to the ocean and hang yeah. for a half a day and collect your thoughts and walk on the beach, and pick up some shells and realize, you know, you are pretty infinite in the world of everything. So it's, you know, just this little tiny thing, everything is a possibility, you know? Yeah, yeah. man. That's where I, that, that is you, you nailed it. That's exactly what I love about places like that. Like I love standing on top of the mountains and, and, feeling the same way feeling really small and yeah puts puts everything into perspective for you in a hurry for sure i was watching uh who was i watching not too long ago i think it was probably joe rogan we were and he was talking with somebody and they were talking about how you know, they were living their second lives mm -hmm. and, and he was like well what does that mean and he's like that's when you realize you only have one life to live and then you gotta just do it man you just gotta go out and do it so uh, what do you got yeah, coming up? Uh, you talked a little bit about getting on the road. Uh, any other projects in the works? Uh, me and Jeff Tate and his brother have started doing our own little podcast uh, where we draft movies. It's called uh, huh? Rough Drafts. Huh? Yeah. Fun. Fun. So we'll just, we'll pick a certain, like we've done um, uh, movies with pro baseball players in them. Ah, okay. Um, movies that were filmed in Cincinnati movies that were filmed in Austin. And then the last one we did yesterday we recorded was uh, movies that came out in 1993. Uh, That's because, awesome. <laughs> yeah, because check out 93. You don't realize what what the movies that came out in 93. I mean, it's just a huge list and they're all heavy hitters. So, give, me a, give me a sample. You got a sample? Oh, yeah. Where's that list? 93. Yeah. See, this Hang is what on. I love about live uh, live streaming we can just get him right Dude, away you got tombstone you've got what? And, yeah no listen okay. and, what's the, and what's the name of the podcast before we so i can give you a little plug here rough drafts r-u-f-f -F, drafts all right and it's available anywhere you listen to podcasts correct um well you had I'd go to jeff tate's page first because okay. i don't think he's we've got him up on uh Okay. On any of the services yet. But all right. So 93, Dazed and Confused, Falling Down, Nightmare Before Christmas, A Bronx Tale, This Boy's Life, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, In the Name of the Father, Tombstone, Searching for Bobby Fisher, Indecent uh, Proposal, Carlito's Way, uh, A Perfect World, Pelican Brief, The Sandlot, The Firm, Coneheads, The Fugitive, uh, Beverly Hillbillies, Fatal Instinct, uh, Joy Luck Club, Schindler's List, the oh. Piano, Ernest Rides Again, Come On, True Romance, In the Line of Fire, Robin Hood Men in Tights, Mrs. Doubtfire, The Good Son, Poetic Justice, oh. The Leprechaun, Do I Need oh. to Keep Going, Groundhog Day, Oh my God. Army of Darkness, <laughs> El Mariachi, CB4, <laughs> Hear No Evil, All 93, dude. That's what I'm talking about. That Dang. is a great, oh. The Crush. The Crush, what a great Rudy. year. 
<laughs> Alive cannibalism, dude. <laughs> what a great year, 93. Holy That's what smokes. I'm saying. Grumpy old men, Robocop 3. And I didn't realize that was one that Tate brought up. He was like, I was looking at the back of Tombstone, and on the back of it, it was like one of the top 10 movies in 93. And he was like, Well, what the f- the top 10? Like that should be in the top five. Like yeah. what else came out in 93? Wow. You know, and then he saw and was like, Oh, okay, we gotta do this. Funny so. leprechaun. <laughs> the leprechaun. The leprechaun. That movie freaked me out a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh all right, well, what's uh Jeff's website? Is it jefftate.com? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, look up Jeff Tate comedian, not you know, the Queen's Reich singer. Because <laughs> they're both spelled the same, even. Do they have the I hope they don't have the same hairdo? No, <laughs> but not too far off. <laughs> well, Trey, uh, I thank you for giving me some time today and hanging out on our debut live stream show. Um, we're going to do this Friday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific time, so midnight your time. Um, you have to stay up late to, to check it out. But uh, we'll be in touch, and hopefully we'll do more of these in the future. And I look forward to looking at rough drafts as well. That, looks, that sounds hilarious, and I can't wait to li- give it a listen. And um, I want people to uh, make sure and check out my page too, the Justin McDonald show.com. I do all kinds of things. I'm a news anchor. I do this and that. I can't have an opinion, so <laughs> I can only have fun. That's all I can do. Brutal. So, I mean, brutal, but good. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's brutal, but good. But again, thanks for coming on and uh, we appreciate you very much. Thanks for having Justin. Welcome to the Justin McDonald Show and sitting with me here, as we've all become accustomed to in this COVID-19 era, is broadcasting via Zoom. <laughs> and Citizen Smith, uh, how are you? Very good, my, my good friend in Portland, Oregon. Sorry that I'm across the country right now handling my uh, COVID situation with the family and taking care of mom, but in due time, we shall return to the Beaver State. Yes, you will. Uh, the Rose City anxiously awaits your return. Um, I got to say, you know, you started uh, back up with the podcast last week. Things are starting to uh, come together. Um, it is a long journey, and we're excited that uh, Citizen Smith is back uh, on the air. Um, you know, whether it be via the internet, via over the radio waves, over the TV waves, no matter how it's delivered, Citizen Smith is now back in people's ears. Yes, and the objective is to incorporate local talk about Portland and also Oregon and in a little bit of uh, national issues, bring it all together uh, in an exciting podcast, 30 to 45 minutes every day. Well, Monday, Wednesday, Friday right now. Yeah, we, we decided to walk uh, first, uh, not to run, but uh, that will be coming in due time. You'll be doing your talk show from here and taking calls and engaging with listeners even more so. Um, it's going to be an exciting thing, and we look forward to it uh, and, you know, what a great thing we have here. TalkCast PDX, we're in Portland, right in the thick of all the action over the last uh, months. It's been kind of crazy. Now we're in the middle of another lockdown for COVID-19. I'm sure you'll say something about it. I think I lost uh, lost you there for one second. Uh, so low anyway. battery. Uh, this this uh, video <laughs> stuff sucks the battery out of my iPhone. <laughs> Technology, yeah, uh, baby. Please, uh, would you- 
Would you tell everybody, uh, everybody wear masks? You know, I don't understand why we're having this conversation. Yeah. yeah why, yeah. why are we? Why are we talking about people wearing masks? Why am I watching kids run on the football fields at the end of games without masks? Why are the protesters <laughs> in the street walking around without masks? We understand that this is how we stop this virus and how we stop it from spreading. I just don't get the, the mentality. I got you, and uh, you can uh, listen to more of Citizen Smith uh, weekdays, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. He brings you a new podcast on those days. You can listen to where uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts, but we prefer you to go to TalkCastPDX.com to listen to Citizen Smith. This is the Justin McDonald Show, the No Politics Zone, buddy. And uh, <laughs> we'll be back uh, with more in just a few. kids involved as well because now it's time for what's in the bowl and this time around we're gonna be checking out this crazy cereal i can't get over it but it's a twinkies cereal i am not kidding a twinkie cereal and i had my son aiden give it a try take a look at this There you have it. Two thumbs up from Aiden on the Twinkies cereal. Uh, I, I'm dumbfounded. They had two different cereals to choose from, the Twinkies and the Donuts, you know, from Hostess. It was really a, a hard choice, and I went with the Twinkies thinking, you know, <laughs> it's a classic. It's got to work. We'll see, but it looks like it's pretty good as a cereal, and that's what's in the bowl right here on the Justin McDonald Show. That's going to do it for the Justin McDonald Show podcast. Oh, we had a great time. The No Politics Zone, it's such a refreshing, refreshing thing when uh, we don't have to talk about those kinds of things. Yes, we're here to have a good time. Check out our website, TalkCastPDX.com. You can get your own podcast if you'd like. Also, check out my website, JustinMcDonaldShow.com. You can buy some shirts there. Have a good time. Help support the show. We do appreciate it. Thank you again. We'll be back next week, 9 p.m. Pacific Time, midnight Eastern, right here on TalkCastPDX.com. <laughs>